take a look at this. This is a titanium structure within a structure within a structure. There's only one way to make this. It's called additive manufacturing. So you can make things you can't make any other way. There is absolutely no way I can have this complexity. I make my design and I literally say print. And then what will happen is I send, the, send the, the, the models, the 3D models to this machine and it literally grows the part. So you start off with a, with a powder and the way that this system works is it has a rake that will put a thin layer of powder down and then it uses an E-beam, an electron beam. It heats up the powder and then it melts the powder where the part is. And then it has a table that will step down a couple of thousandths of an inch, put another layer on, and then melt the powder where you want the part. And it just continues this sequential process of putting a layer of powder down, melting it, stepping down, and then putting another layer down. The Automation, Manufacturing, and Robotics Group at the Oak Ridge National Lab in Tennessee is funded by the U.S. government. It's working with these additive manufacturing machines to find new ways of making prosthetics, machinery, and even robot parts. This is an arm. It weighs probably around four pounds, but about two pounds of that is electric motors. And to give you an idea, the human arm weighs about eight pounds, so it's actually lighter than the human arm. So again, as this thing is, as this thing is moving, there's a, there's a pump in the base of the fingers, in the base of the palm, and it's driving pistons in the hand. If for every for every one pound of a part, they'll waste nine pounds of material in the machining process. With this, it's almost the opposite. This is a part that we made for a pump, and uh, it has a lot of complexity in it. About 98% of the powder that was used in the fusion process is in the final part. So it's extremely efficient in terms of the material use. Right now, the, the titanium powders are about $150 a pound. And so for, for this, the hand that I'm making, it weighs a half a pound. It's you know, about $75 in, in material costs. The, the big cost right now is the, the, is the cost of the equipment. That will come down as these things have more and more market penetration. So we have aerospace companies. Aerospace companies are extremely excited about trying to make really lightweight parts. Uh, we have robotics companies. Medical companies. Biomedical is really one of the, the hot areas because, again, you can customize the part. You can scan the patient and then replicate it. Somebody had had a brain, had, had crushed their skull. They scanned this side of their head, mirrored it, printed out this side, and did an implant. So there's a lot of applications today, everyday applications in the biomedical area. It's used as spreading to more traditional industrial areas, and it's theoretically possible that in the years to come, a manufacturing machine could be created that is as large as an airplane hangar and used to create entire planes.